hey y'all this week has been really up and down but we're through it so that's what's really important <laughs> on monday we play the caps it went really well a 5-1 win a fantastic end to trade deadline day and a really positive start to this new playoff fight jackets team Five different people scored, including Mark Letestu and Sonny Milano, but there were also quite a few people that had multi-point nights. Unfortunately, in the true fashion of equivalent exchange in hockey, Josh Anderson got hurt late in the game and will be out for about a month with a knee sprain. It's super unfortunate, uh, but luckily the Jackets had another forward lying in wait to meet them in L.A., uh, newly acquired Thomas Vanek. So off the Jackets went to L.A., and then they lost to the Kings 2-5. Corpy was in goal, and he played pretty well, but after the first period, it really seemed like no one in front of him did. Both the Jackets' goals were scored in the first, and then the Kings scored five times without challenge. Wenberg got injured and was out with an upper body injury uh, before he went to Anaheim, but before we get to that, there's one thing I really did find interesting in this game, and it was Corpy's play style. It's been about two weeks since we saw Corby in the NHL. He's been playing in the AHL with the Monsters and winning games down there and keeping in shape, but... Prior to Thursday, I'd say that Corpusalo's style was incredibly similar to Bob's. Like, you can take some Corpy highlights and put them directly next to Bob highlights and be like, oh yeah, that's the same play. They learn the same thing. They play the same way. But on Thursday, Corpy was very aggressive. He was often at the edge of the crease or outside of the crease. He played the puck a lot more. He moved a lot more. He was generally a lot more aggressive. I don't know if he'll play like that again, because despite the fact that it generally went well for him, the team played very badly in front of it, so you know, it might be like the team's kind of afraid of that, which I understand, even though one, only really one of the goals was actually Corpy's goal, and the other ones were more, where in the world is the defense? But it's kind of exciting. Teams that have goalies that have multiple styles are more successful, I think. Like, for example, uh, Marc-Andre Fleury couldn't beat the Senators, but they put in Matt Murray, and suddenly the Senators couldn't pay for a goal. And it's just, if you have two different goalies who have two different styles, then you're much more likely to never meet a team that you can't beat. And so if we really want Bob and Corby to become a 1A, 1B tandem, the fact that Corby's developing his own style is really exciting and really something we should be looking forward to and hopefully something that the Jackets are encouraging. It's a little scary because <laughs> it's new, but I'm excited to see how this develops. But on to the next game as we have to. Uh, we lost 2-4 to the Ducks in a very last-year type game, meaning that there were lots of scrums on almost a line brawl. The Jackets have been a lot less physical this year, and it's something that Torts said that he didn't mind November, but it seems like he's been pushing more towards his forwards, especially doing more hits, uh, having a lot more physical play in front of the crease. So, you know, back to the hard physical game of Jackets past. It was still a loss, uh, though. Bjorkstrand had a primary assist on both goals scored, which is great for him growing as a player, and Dubois was really scrappy out there. Those were our number one highlights. The number one lowlight of this game, though, were shorthanded goals. We let our second shorthanded goal in two games. Our power play is now so bad that it is actively hurting us. <laughs> but it's okay, because the Jackets finished the week on a high note with a 4-2 win against San Jose, where Pinarin scored two goals, although the first one is arguably Ian Coles, but whatever. Winberg was back, so that was fantastic that his injury was very short-term like that, and we became the second-to-last team in the league to have a player reach 20 goals on the season in March. But hey, it's fine. We're back in a wild-card spot. Speaking of, here's the Metro. Caps have 81 points, Flyers have 79, Penguins have 78. They're pretty much at the top three. I mean, they'll bounce around over who's where, but I don't think anyone's going to pass with them. Jersey has 74 points, and we have 71. Our immediate threats uh, to the playoffs are the Panthers with 70 points and the Hurricanes with 69, which is objectively nice, but also terrifying in this context. We have 16 more games. Carolina's two points down from us with completely equal everything except for the number of wins in series against them, meaning that if it comes to a tiebreaker, they're above us. Florida's only one point down, and I think they still have three games in hand. Ideally, we'll go on a hot streak and the Devils will slow down and we'll pass them right by to get the first wild card spot, but I'm not betting on it. Basically, this March cannot be last March. We're probably going to be at best, about one game away from being out of the playoffs. This means that pretty much every game that happens from here to April 7th is a must win. 
which is scary when we know that we play against the Knights, the Flyers, the Bruins, the Panthers, the Penguins, and Nashville before we are done for the year. But, as Mark Lutescu said on Monday, there's a heightened sense of urgency. You can tell we're in a fight and that everyone here is ready for that fight. The California road trip is hard for everyone. It always is. But I think that with the win over the Caps, with the energy that we had in the Anaheim game, with stopping the comeback in San Jose to get the win, the Jackets are here. They're ready. The trade deadline really showed that the front office believes in this team and is focused on sustained success, not just a flash in the pan. And I think we really have a chance here. Last night, John Terrell talked about how the kids, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Oliver Bjorkstrand, and Sonny Milano specifically, were doing fantastically when we have guys who have had career years last year and have been subpar this year. And that's a huge problem. If they can't get picking up in this last month, I think it's going to be something the Jackets have to seriously look at in the offseason. But I think we really have a chance. Even if Felino and Wemberg and Doobie and others keep underperforming, we made it this far with a team that's been injury-ridden, with a power play that's absolutely terrible, and a penalty kill that's almost as bad, with these same people underperforming all season. And while it was almost impossible to see us putting up a fight before, I think the confidence gain from the trade deadline, the people gain from the trade deadline, have really bolstered us as a team, and that the Jackets seriously have a chance. And maybe we can't do a full cup run, but I think that's okay. Yarmo said just last summer that our window was just now opening. I think we can maybe do this, guys. <laughs> But with that, this one is over. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like if you like this. Click subscribe if you loved it. I'm Lydia. This is Cannon Fire. And take a deep breath. Start the 16-game end of the season countdown.